following this video, you should be able to create a simple turn-based combat game like this one, with units capable of attacking one another as well as healing themselves. I'll also show you how to add sounds and animations. If you are interested in a specific topic, just use chapters in the description. Also, visual assets were created by me and won't be part of this tutorial. If you'd like to see how to make assets like these, comment down below and subscribe so that you're notified once the video is out. Start off by putting in the assets you want to use. I'd suggest trying to create the visual feel first and then focus on gameplay elements. Which in case of this turn based game, I wanted to have two units standing opposite of each other, their specific huts showing their stats, then player control UI with buttons controlling the actions and finally battle text as a form of a feedback to player. <laughs> This applies to 2D, but keep in mind that in order for a sprite to render in front of something, you have to change its sorting layer or the order in its layer. To make the background livelier, you can animate pretty much everything, such as trees, grass, or even the sun. In the case of this video, I'll show you how you can do a rig-based animation. First off, select your sprite and head over to the sprite editor, and in the top left corner, change the skinning editor. Click create bone and start adding bones that will be the skeletal structure of the mesh. Then go to auto geometry and make sure you have weights enabled. As for the subdivide, the higher you go, the more complicated the mesh will become. 30 works for me. Click generate for all visible. Now finally, go into weight brush and adjust each bone if necessary. To change how mesh is affected by a certain bone, double click on a mesh and click on the bone color you want to paint with and use your mouse over the vertices created by the auto geometry button. Once you're done, hit apply. <laughs> Place the brick sprite into the scene. Open animation window over in window, animation, animation, <laughs> add a new animation, click the red button to start recording and animate using bones you have created. <laughs> Starting off with the core of the game, we'll create a game object that will be responsible for handling most of the battle logic, like setting up the fight and handling turn-based system. <laughs> Next, I'd recommend creating a separate script that will handle all the unit interactions and attributes. Also, to make creating more units simpler, I'd use scriptable objects for all the common attributes a unit could have, such as health, mana and attack. <laughs> Lastly, add a way for a player to see the changes in unit attributes in form of a HUD, for which you should also create another script that will be only responsible for the HUD and the UI. In order to create heal or any other spell for a unit, we can create a particle prefab and add it to the unit prefab and create script to handle the particle system. Underneath your main camera, you should already have an audio listener component. If you want to add an ambient sound, you can do so directly in a game control object and just drag and drop the clip into an audio source component. As for the attack or heal sounds, go into your respective unit prefabs and attach an audio source component to them. Lastly, you should also add a script that will handle all the sounds. I recommend adding a scene restart button, both as an in-game mechanic but mostly during development, it's much faster to restart a scene in a play mode than it is to go out of it and then back in. Third line is used to create a menu in Unity for scriptable object asset and altogether this script has common attributes of unit. Since it's for making scriptable objects, it makes it extremely simple to create different units with their own base stats and modify them during play mode. This script is responsible for handling unit animations and play them during their respective actions. Animation name string refers to the trigger parameter created in animator window. It uses animator component attached to the parent game object and on animation complete callback in the main unit controller script to determine when an animation has finished. This script handles unit sounds and as long as a sound is attached in editor, it plays it once using the play one shot method of audio source component attached to the parent game object. This script handles particles used during some unit animations and is attached to the child object of the main parent unit game object. The child object holds all all the different particle system game objects and depending on the provided string parameter it finds the correct game object by its name in hierarchy using transform.find method. Since the play particle is of i enumerator type, we use the particle system duration to determine when to call back using on particle finish. Similar to on animation complete, 
in unit based script. This script handles units hut. Start and head method is used right after instantiating unit object and sets up the hut to work correctly with units attributes, changing the max values and health and mana sliders, as well as units name. Update hut method is responsible for updating the hut after actions. Since the unit is instantiated using battle controller script, the hut is assigned at creation using the assign hud method. Script responsible for updating battle text after each unit action using multiple methods for templates for different actions. The only different method is heal text, since it is used as a coroutine in order to both tell the player that enemy used heal move and how much the enemy healed afterwards. Compared to previous scripts, this one and the next one will be much longer as they use the previous ones to function. Starting from the top, we have an enum to determine unit state and then references to aforementioned scripts as well as a callback action for a battle controller script, position of other units stored as vector 3 and current attributes of this unit. Once the unit is instantiated, we assign some references references to its components using getComponent function and set its attributes to those specified in its scriptable object. The next three functions serve to help other scripts. Make ten function is currently used for enemy AI logic, but should the game contain more enemy types, it should be turned into a script specific for that enemy for organization. In case of this tutorial, the only enemy is Goblin and a Black Goblin, which is just a stronger version of the original, inspired by the gothic game series made by Piranha Bytes. Right now, it uses a simple conditional statement to determine whether it's worth the heal itself, otherwise it just attacks. For each action type, for now, attack and heal, there is a function made for that. This one is used by both player and the enemy. The attack turn function firstly updates the battle HUD and using the move to position function, it prepares the unit for moving to the target position. The function itself just plays animation and sets the unit state to moving, which is then used in the update method to move the unit closer to the opposite one and once it reaches the desired spot, it stops and we get the callback from on move complete to continue with the original attack turn function. Quick note, the parenthesis and equals greater than sign in the move to position function is a lambda function and we put the code we want to be executed after the player has reached destination in the curly brackets. So once we reach the enemy position, we play the animation and once the animation is done, we update the enemy stats and HUD and prepare the unit to move back to the original position. To do that, we have to rotate the object locally and call move to position function one more time. Once that finishes, we end the unit's turn. Moving on to the heal turn function, it also updates the battle HUD, but right after it changes its sex to show how much the unit healed for. Then it heals the unit and updates its stats ending its turn. Enough mana for spell is a function that returns true if the unit has enough mana to cast a spell. The amount needed is set in its scriptable object asset. Last function in unit controller script is the delete function, which plays the unit death animation and particles associated with it, and after the particles end, the unit game object is destroyed with a 1 second delay specified in the destroy function. On to the last script, which is probably the most important one as it handles the entire game. Starting off, we have the game state enum, references to other scripts, transfer component of the game objects that serve as a spawning point for the units and arrays for the unit prefabs to spawn. In the start function, we first instantiate both the player and enemy units and so both the game object and their unit controller script in a variable. Then we set up their huts and set the game state to player's turn. Summon monster function creates our enemy the same way we created the player. Turn player function is always called after player finishes their function and checks for the win condition, in which case it would end the game. Otherwise, it calls the turn enemy function, which firstly waits for a little bit and then calls the function from enemy's unit's controller script. After that is finished, we change the game state to player's turn and check for a loss condition. Compared to how we handled enemy AI in unit control, players' actions are determined by buttons with their own functions to call. First, we have attack button, which, just like all the other actions, checks whether it's player's turn, and if it is, it calls the attack turn function from unit controller script. Now for the heal turn function. After checking whether it's player's turn, we check whether the player has enough mana, and if we don't, then we update the battle hub to tell the information to the player. Otherwise, we call heal turn function 
from unit controller and once it's done we call the turn player function last two functions were shown during the restart chapter of this video and are responsible for restarting the scene and exiting out of the game window one more thing for some function calls like during the attack turn function we can use animation events to determine whether an animation has ended or also to play sound at a specific point of animation links to the code are in the description that's pretty much it for this video if you got any questions or ideas on what you'd like me to cover as well as whether you want a tutorial on the pencil art style used for the assets in this video comment it down below it helps a lot if you enjoyed watching it or learned something new consider giving it a thumbs up and if you want to be notified once new videos are out consider subscribing i'll be grateful to you if you are more into relaxing gaming or long plays check out my other channel since i decided to move the gaming part of this channel onto the other one but anyways thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye bye